when you went to Stanford, Stanford probably had a portal for signing up for classes, right? You as a student, you care how that portal looks. Is it easy to find different tabs? Is it easy to like mm-hmm. update information, right? That is not the concern though of the president or of like the CTO of Stanford. Uh, and you already mentioned that this is for frontline workers, and I think obviously no one can really deny the potential of that, especially because they tend to be an underserved population in terms of technology. So I'm curious about while you've been working on this, what have been some of the biggest challenges you've had to face with this problem area of frontline workers, remote assist, mixed reality? I think the things that really come to mind to answer your question are challenges that are not just about mixed reality but about enterprise tools in general. Um, So first of all, for most enterprise products, the person who is the end user is not the person who's purchasing the product. And when I was preparing for product management interviews, I was like, oh, that's like really obvious, right? Like the innovation lead of a company is gonna buy the product and then maybe the employees of the company are gonna use it. But this has actually just dramatic implications for what the product team has to think about when designing um, and like creating, sorry, when like creating this product. Um, So first of all, um, these, when we create this product, not only does it have to be easy to, for the end user to use, but it has to be easy for the company to deploy, right? Like as an end user, for example, um, when you went to Stanford, Stanford probably had a lot of tools that you would use, like maybe your portal for signing up for classes, right? You as a student, you care how that portal looks. Is it easy to find different tabs? Is it easy to like update information, right? That is not the concern though of the president or of like the CTO of Stanford. Their concern is how is it gonna integrate with the other systems that we have? We have all these legacy systems. How are we gonna move all the information over, right? Mm -hmm. How are we going to manage these students' data? So I think like, Part of my product is making sure that pro- part of my job is making sure the product is usable and you know easy and fun for people for like technicians to use. Another part of it is making sure it aligns with companies like deployment processes and their privacy standards. There are so many things I didn't know about like companies' tenant architecture, how they're actually rolling out a product and like you know getting the sign off to make sure that this is secure enough for their needs and. Yeah, this is interesting because when we're building when we're building new features, the features aren't just features that end users use, but also features that make the product easy to deploy. Um, and mm-hmm. another challenge is kind sorry, of like, I'm just gonna interject mm-hmm. really quickly yeah. and say that that's really that's a very interesting problem because it's very different from a company that or a product that is a consumer facing product and all you have to do is just put it out on the market and people buy it like whenever they want exactly tiktok right all you got all tiktok has to do well not all they have to do but like to get an end user to use it they put out some ads they have some awesome marketing campaigns for us the customers who want to use our product they're like oh my gosh this is amazing but we're going to have to try it out do a lot of like privacy assessments, not because they don't trust Microsoft, but because there's a process at every company f- to like assess these products, right? And then they have to train key people in the company how to use it, decide how to evangelize to the rest of their company, decide if this is the right time in the company's, um, you know, this company's probably looking at a lot of different products, right? Is this the right time to introduce a new product to the company and to employees to use? So A good way to spend their budget too. Yeah, exactly. And so you're not just convincing one person, one end user to download TikTok. You're convincing a whole chain of people up from the CEO of a company to like innovation leads, um, just so many bit leads of business units, like every single one of these people has to be in line, has to decide that they want to buy this product and use it and how they're going to deploy it. So yeah, it sometimes it doesn't feel like I work on a mixed reality product because a lot of the problems that I'm solving day to day have to do with just problems any enterprise like product in- would. Like infrastructure in a way. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It's interesting because your numbers that are are not necessarily looking at the number of users you have. It's also look, it's mainly looking at the number of companies you've like signed on to the product because it's either you get the 10,000 people or you don't get the 10,000 people. There's like no balancing act to do there. It's mm-hmm. just all or nothing in a right. way. Right. Like imagine if you got a new and improved portal that was much easier to use, more intuitive, etc. 
you would probably still hesitate to use it because you have to learn how to use it, right? It's like if Facebook changes, if Facebook uh, as a consumer product, if they change around some buttons on your newsfeed, you're like, okay, that's fine. If I were to change your student portal, if I were to change um, other enterprise, other tools you use for your work, like for example, if Photoshop, if Photoshop moved their tools around all the time, that would be so frustrating because you're using it for work, right? Mm -hmm. And like anything that yeah. breaks your workflows or introduces new work to ramp up to a new feature or a new product is hard. And like on the topic of ramping up, this device is amazing. I haven't even really talked about HoloLens yet, but pretty much what it does is um, as a technician, when I'm using it, if, I, if something breaks, I need to get help from someone else. I, um, there's a camera up here and that's how I'm showing the remote collaborator a video feed of what I'm looking at, right? And then they can just upload, they can send me files and those files like pop up as slates in the world. So it's super amazing. It lets me work uh, with my hands free, but still learning, you're not even just learning a new piece of software, you're learning new hardware too, right? Um, like just imagine how hard it was for me to learn new like learn audacity which is like our um, sound editing tool i'm already familiar with my computer with my hardware right i'm just learning new software and that was hard enough mm. imagine introducing people to new hardware and new software at the same time like first yeah. of all it's they like have new to... interactions too because you have to like mm -hmm. it's very unnatural to like push something in the middle of thin air <laughs> yeah it definitely takes some getting used to um and so the customers that we work with they've definitely been um, amazing and giving us great feedback for how to make this as intuitive and um, quick and easy to use as possible. Mm -hmm. Was there another challenge you wanted to talk about? Yeah, another interesting challenge is that companies will make really big and expensive decisions based on our roadmap. So if we need to delay a feature, that's a very big deal. So imagine you're a company and you need to decide strategically, when does it make sense for me to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars and resources to investigate this new tool, um, do a pilot and get everyone on board, right? Maybe you're like, okay, a really critical feature that we need to have before we buy this tool is we need like feature X. And imagine you're like, okay, we set aside our budget, we're going to purchase this product this month because the company promised that they were going to release feature X at this month. And then imagine that the company delays this feature. Then your plans kind of change, right? Like maybe yeah. now it's a new year and you now you don't have the same budget to spend on this tool mm -hmm. anymore. So I think just when we publish dates online, it's a very big deal to like commit to them and to meet them because people are making very expensive decisions. Yeah, like a big company, it also causes customers to lose trust in you, too. Absolutely. So, yeah, the stakes of working on an enterprise product are very high. And I and these stakes feel even higher because as a PM, as a product manager, mm -hmm. I'm always talking to these customers on the phone. So yeah. if we can't deliver something, it feels so personal because I've been on so many calls with them. And I understand how much they need this feature. So. Mm -hmm.